win for President Trump this week as the Supreme Court okayed key parts of his revised travel ban, including barring travelers from six Muslim-majority countries. They are Libya, Iran, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, and Yemen, who lack bona fide ties to the United States. Thursday's rollout was smooth, despite minimal protests, but already the left is filing lawsuits. Just minutes before the ban took effect, Hawaii filed an emergency motion asking a federal judge to clarify which people with close familial relationships will be allowed into the country and whom will be banned. Joining me now, Deputy Assistant to the President, Dr. Sebastian Gorka. So, Dr. Gorka, I'm not really sure how many Sudanese are vacationing in Honolulu, but uh, <laughs> that's the, besides the point. Um, in my opinion, coming to America is a movie. It's not a right. And I don't think a lot of these ACLU lawyers sitting there at these airports understand that. Now, tell me if I have this right. If you are a 25-year-old Syrian male and you fly into JFK, and, you know, that's a war-torn country, ISIS controls large swaths of land, and maybe you have a Hertz rental car agreement, you can't now come into America like that, whereas before, there's a shot you were getting in, right? Right. So the Supreme Court, Jesse, gave us utter vindication, 9-0 to zero decision, no dissensions, the original travel moratorium stands with a small modification unless you have close relatives. So you can't be distant relatives, it can't be your fiance. Unless you have close relatives, you are not coming into the United States for the time being until we review the whole process and are clear that we can verify who you are and you are not a threat to America. Right. So that makes perfect sense in my opinion. I, America is a melting pot. But we still have a chef, and the chef is going to control <laughs> what ingredients go into the pot. That's common sense, and I believe the Supreme Court believes that. Now, there's a question whether Ruth Bader Ginsburg should recuse herself because you know she said some things about Trump when he was running and now that he's president, which were really unseemly. Um, you know, kind of calling him an egomaniac, he, you know, even joking that she might leave the country if he became president. Do you, do you think that's a, a fair issue? Look, I, I'm, I'm not going to qualify individual Supreme Justices or court judges on the Supreme Court, but I love your analogy about the chef. Right. Uh, the one I use is very simply, look, do you lock your front door at night when you go to bed? Right, yes. Sure you do. Yeah. And during the day, when people come into your house, who decides? Do they decide whether they come into your house, or do you decide who comes into your house? The president has the constitutional authority and always has had to decide who comes to the United States and coming to the United States or becoming an American is not a right. It is a privilege. That's exactly right. There's two other big immigration wins this week. The House GOP making good on Trump's promise to make America safe again by passing Kate's law and defunding sanctuary cities, both targeting criminal illegal aliens. But for some reason, Democrats went nuts. Listen. The Republican Party has had Mexican fever. Russia investigation not going well for the dear leader at the White House? Hey, let's whip out that Mexican thing, as Vice President Pence said. Maybe it will keep our voters happy and distracted. Health care not going well? Let's just hate some Mexicans today. These bills are nothing new, and they are not really about fighting crime. They are about racial profiling and putting Latinos, quote-unquote, in their place. No, well, I think that's offensive. And riddle me this, Dr. Gorka. If Republican mayors were to disobey federal law on guns, on abortion, on any other hot button topic, marriage, the media would say there's a civil war at foot and that we have a constitutional crisis. But whenever there's a Democratic mayor who disobeys federal law, it's somehow righteous. Look, that clip you just played, that was reverse racial baiting, nothing else. Think about why this law, Kate's law, was actually brought in front of the congressmen and women. A beautiful woman, 32 years old, gunned down in broad daylight by a man who'd come to this country illegally, deported five times, yep. Jesse, convicted seven times. How is it a bad idea to stop that 
happening again. It's common sense legislation. So if someone commits a crime, a felony, and they are deported and are caught re-entering the country illegally, they get locked up for a good period of time. Now, any Democrat that's against that, I would like to see them explain that to Kate Steinle's family. Absolutely. This new bill means that if you are caught coming back after you've been deported, you can get two years in federal prison. And as you just said, if we convict you and then deport you and you come back illegally, we can lock you away for 25 years to protect the future Kate Steinleys. All right, Dr. Gorka, thank you very much and happy July 4th weekend. Happy, Ju happy July 4th, Jesse.